Welcome, welcome. Father, we thank you for your word. Oh, it's your word. It's so good. We know what your will is. We know you. We know what you're doing in our life. We know what we can even expect that you're doing because of your word. Jesus' name, amen. Well, we went by to pick up our friend as well. We don't know where he's at. Been calling him. He's been getting a ride with us. Came down to the church and he's driving his new pickup now. Praise God. He don't need no ride. <laughs> he can give us a ride. <laughs> Amen. So in 1 John, if you got a Bible, remember anybody remember the two things we've been talking about? Where's the power at? Where's the power at? Y'all awake today? Where's the power at? It's in you. It's in your mouth. It's in your mouth. It's in your mouth. Amen. So the power is in your mouth. So let's look here. If you got a Bible, look at uh, 1 John. You got St. John, which is Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. But this isn't that John. It's you keep on going to the right. Or if you got it on the phone, it's going to say 1 John 5 and 14. 1 John 5, 14. Well, where's the power at? And then what is it that we're saying with our tongue? We just say anything, you know, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. No, we're saying what the Bible says about us with our tongue. That's what we're saying. Amen. And then we've been talking, and then we talk about that when we say it is also, that's the way we receive from God. We're not asking. Most people think that when you uh, say that you're asking. No, we already were ask according to his word, according to the Bible. So when we do that, then that's what you receive. And the reason why people don't receive from God, there's only one reason why people don't receive from God. They don't know how to receive from God. They think that asking constantly is God sees fit, then he's going to let me have it. That's what most people think. And, uh, but the Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible just says, ask receive we went over that wednesday night where the bible says all everyone that ask receive well you can't get any simpler than that so when you pray or when you're saying something uh it don't it didn't he didn't say that if you wish you would get it then you're in faith no see god's a faith god he's not a a, a wish god you know, so what we do is we just simply would say, you know, uh, what is it that you want in your hand? What is it that you want in your life? Then you would just simply, you're not saying it to people, because it's like talking foreign language to them. They try to talk you out of it. Uh, so even so-called Christian people or church-going people, you know, uh, uh, religious type people we're not we're not preaching religion there's no one in the bible that says preach religion but it does say teach the word of god and that's what we're doing today as it is written so whatever it is in your hand or your clothes you know everything that's on my body this building we're in what we drove down here in what we ate or the water we drank the houses we live in the, everything about it the person, place, or thing that you believe God uh, for or with, you, when you receive what you've prayed or asked for, the way you receive is by what you say. If you say, I believe it's coming, well, do you really want to keep pushing it off in the future or do you need it now? Does anybody here don't need no money? You know, give it to me, I'll show you how to spend it. 
<laughs> no, she said, well, I believe God's going to God. It's not a going to God. That's not receive. What is that? That's going to. Receive is right now, present tense. But I can't wear it, smell it, eat it, drive it, wear it, whatever, with your five senses. Right, that's why you speak faith. Faith is God's language. Religion is not God's language. Faith is God's language. So what would, I mean, uh, what if uh, in Genesis, the first chapter, uh, God, you know, he seen that the earth was formless and void. What if, uh, what if, what if God would have said, yeah, it's formless and void. Good nothing. You know what? The earth would still be formless and void. See, he didn't, he didn't say what he saw. He said what he wanted it to be just like it is. What did he do? He spoke it into existence. That's what you do. That's what you do. Well, I'm not God. Right? Nobody's accusing you of that, believe me. <laughs> but we are to do what God says. And God says, well, what is it that you want? Well, you know, if God wanted me to have it, He'll just fall out of the sky and hit me in the head. You're dumber than mud. <laughs> yeah, I said dumber than mud. No, use the Bible. That's why He wrote it. So what do, what do we do? Well, let's look here. Power is in our tongue. See? And uh, let's look. Were you, are you in uh, 1 John chapter 5 yet? Mm -hmm. In verse 14. Mm -hmm. says, this is the confidence that we have. You say, going to have? No. It's talking present tense. The Bible's written in present tense. Most people read that. This is the confidence that we're going to have. One of these days. No. The Lord sees fit. Well, He already saw fit over 2,000 years ago for you to live in the blessing of God. That's why He created it. And this is the confidence, not in ourselves. This is the, says, well, I don't have very much self-confidence. Good. Self-confidence gets you nowhere. Not with God. And uh, so this is the confidence that we have in ourself. What's it say? Who's the confidence in? Him. In Him. Well, who's the Him we're talking about? God. So the confidence is in God and what He said. That if we ask, there's the word ask again. Now what is it that we're saying? Anything. Well, I don't know if God wants me to have it or not. Does whatever it is that you are uh, speaking faith over, does it is it anything? Does it fall under the category of anything? Well, I don't know if it's God's will for me to have that or not. Uh, do you have a Bible? And we believe you have a brain. And we believe you can read. If you can't read, let somebody uh, look at it with you and you have confidence in there read it to you. Uh, maybe you need to read it to the devil because he tried to tell you, oh, well, anything don't mean anything. No, 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 no. No. No, the Bible, when God says anything, it means anything. Well, this is the Bible, Pastor Mike, that we're talking about. I'm wanting God to tell me that he wants me to have anything. He did. He wrote it down right here. He wrote you a letter. The Bible, think about that. The Bible is God talking to you. This is God talking to you. And what did he say? Ask anything according to the will, his will, he hears us. So what is the Bible? Is God's will written down? He said, ask anything, and you got it. You can't get no clearer than that. So, but we're asking according to his will. See, see there, that, that, it, it didn't say, that's what people do right here. 
Well, I'm praying about this or praying about that. And they'll say, now, if it's the Lord's will, give it to me. He didn't say to pray like that. That's foolish. What did he say? According to his will. What's his will? Bible. The Bible is his will and testament. So we're not asking or saying something contrary outside of what the Bible is teaching. No, we're right in line with it. According to his will. You could say according to his word. And the word of God is his word. Uh, verse 15. And if we know that he hears us. Well, how do we know that he hears us? He's repeating himself again. If God has to repeat himself, uh, that means he really wants you to get it. Whatsoever, whatsoever, and the word anything is the same word. In verse 14, it says anything, ask anything. And there's 15, it says whatsoever we ask. It's the exact same thing. Just a little bit different way to say it. We know that we have. The word have is mentioned in 14 and also said in verse 15. When do we get it? The second we ask, the second we say we have. No, we get it when it finally shows up. No, because it's never going to show up. <laughs> See, it's not going. The word of God don't fall on you like ripe cherries off a tree. No, you're the one that lines your mouth up with what the Bible saying. When you line your mouth up with what the Bible is saying, see, the Word of God goes into your ears, like right now it's going to your ears, going down into your heart, the most important part of your life and self. Then that's a spiritual part of you. Then when it comes out of your mouth, I have, and you just simply say whatever it is, that whatever you want, turn it into I have. That's simple teaching, but that's the way it works. That's what God did. When he said the earth was formless and void, he said, let there be light. What did he want? Light. So he turned his want into, he said, light be. You could say that money be. Friend be healed. See, body straighten up. You are the healed. See, I have my new whatever it is. If God didn't want us to pray like that, he wouldn't put it in the Bible. So he put it in there and wrote it down. Why? Because the, the things of the enemy is the enemy wants you to think it's okay to believe that God is going to do something in the wild blue yonder. That's not faith. That's silly when you see it in the light of the word. No, you pray right now and you receive right now. You say you have it right now. And it says, well, I want a more scripture on that. Well, Hebrews 11.1 1 says, now faith is. You can't get no clearer than that. Now faith is the substance. What is your dream? What is your goal in life? then you got to quit saying it's coming. you got to start saying, no, I have it now. Why? Because that's what the Bible says. That's prayer. That's faith prayer. That's the only way to relate to God. And all this moaning and crying and belly aching and begging and pleading is not necessary. He says you have it. He wants you to say you have it. Use your faith in God. And what's he say? Verse 14, have Where's our confidence in Him? Look at verse 15. Whatsoever you ask, we know that we what? What do we have? We have. That's present tense. Not going to have. Not someday in the future. No, we have. That's how you're pleasing to God. The petition are things that we said. Uh, it's like a, that we desired of Him. It's like, a, it's like if you're going to go to the store... And say you had a piece of paper and or on your phone nowadays, you'd write down, I'm going to pick up 10 items. Okay? 
Well, we know we can go to the, we write the 10 items down, then we go to the store, and then we put those in our shopping cart, and we mark them off, right? Then we go to the cashier and we pay for it, right? We know how to do that when we have money, when we have natural means, finances to do that. Well, what is your list that you believe you receive with God? Do you have one? Hello? Nobody knows what they want and you won't have nothing. <laughs> Amen. You don't have a list that you pray over. We have one. We go over it every night before we go to bed. The ones that live at the house, we go over it. We call it, you want to do our prayers. It's all written in present tense. Now, what is it that you want in your life? And you have to turn your wants into I have. Well, I know that sounds simple, but you'd be, you'd be surprised at the people that fall over that, fall down, slobber, roll around the dirt, and choke, check, and shoot, and cuss, and everything else about that instead of receive. Get mad at God, shake their fist. I don't know why he's withholding. He ain't withholding nothing. That'd be like that'd be like getting on this highway in front of the church. There's a four-lane highway right in front of the church, and I go up there to that light. There's a and I got to turn left to Oatmulgee, and I keep turning right. You're not gonna go to Oatmulgee turning right. You got to turn left. So I'm sitting there hollering, screaming, and cussing, fighting, and yelling, and stomping, and kicking the car, and the police show up. Sir, can I help you? Yeah, you can tell God let me go to Oak Mulkey. And they're going like, yeah, we got a section so-and-so, so-and-so down here. Bring the boys in the white suits. He's a mentally off patient. But people do that all the time with God. You are mentally off if you're not in faith. It's just that simple. You're unstable. The Bible says in James 1.8, you're unstable in every single way unless you Especially if you say, oh yeah, I heard the faith stuff and I'm going to do something else. That's too elementary for me, kindergarten. That's, you talk about being deceived. There's only one problem with being deceived. You don't know you are. Until you get around someone that's walking in so, so much light that there's no shadows, there's no place to be deceived. This is the slightest change of your vocabulary. When you start saying, while well, I'm praying, pray with me that I get it. Now, wait a minute. Where's that at in the Bible? What's it say? Pray, receive. So you have to pray that you're going to get it. You got to pray, receive. Whosoever, we just read it. Verse 14, have. It says, have in him. Well, you know, Jesus don't need a car or, or, or a truck or clothes or food or anything like that. We're the ones that live in this realm. So what do we do? It's not doing us any good in Him, but it's good to know that we have it in Him. He's provided it in Him. So when we get in Him, give our life to Jesus, everything He has belongs to us now. So how do we get it to work in our life where we can see it in the five senses realm and enjoy it. Whatever you desire. What is it you desire? What is it you desire? What, you, what, do you, what is it you desire in your life? Then you'll have to start talking that desire just like you have it. Because you do in Him, but the way you get it into this realm is by saying you speak it into existence. It already exists. Everything that pertains to life and godliness, He's already given it to you. The second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Already given it to you. So what do we say? I already have it, I already have it, I already have it. No, that's past tense. It's going to come, it's going to come, it's going to come. No, that's future tense. When is faith spoken? Now. We'd simply say, 
I have it. Oh, I know that's simple teaching, but it changed your life forever. I have that, whatever that is. Whatever the desired thing is, it says that we desire of Him. Not in Him anymore. You see that? That means it was in Him. And then now that we're in Him, now that we say what we have now in Him, and then now everything we have is of Him. Because of Him. We could say it like that. See? And when you obtain life like that, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with the world's economy. If you are alarmed and withholding from God because of the world's economy, then you're still hooked into the world's economy. But if you ever get a taste of God's economy, you're like, yeah, I'm not going to put my trust in the world economy. The money may come through the world's economy. The blessings may come through the world's economy, but not because of the world's economy. It's coming because of of the very last two words in first john 5 15 of him you see that it's because of him this is happening when we line up our mouth our heart what we're listening that's why it's so important to watch what you listening to Oh, God's against all this worldly music, against all this stuff. Well, it's, it's not because of that. It's because whatever you listen to is what you become. And since you've given your life to Jesus, then when you, if all you hear all the time is that you're healed, is that you're saved, that you're delivered, that you're set free, that you have all the blessings of God working in your life, there's over 7,000 of them. If you're around that all the time and that's all you hear, I dare to say your life's gonna get majorly improvement. Well, why is it that people uh, seem like their life is cursed? What are you listening to? Are you hanging around people that's cursing you, getting jealous of you, getting jealous of the things of God? They may not be your friends. <laughs> friends should be happy, you know. And then they realize, hey, you can come right up on here too. Come right up in here too and get blessed too. See, because most people think that church is a place where uh, they're supposed to make you feel bad so you'll quit doing so-and-so. You can feel really, really bad. The prisons are full of people that feel bad about what they did, but no change. So just feeling bad about something doesn't make you change. What makes you change is what is it that you're saying? The reason why they have big crime is because people don't have stuff, so they steal it. And they get caught and they get in all trouble. But if they knew that they had everything that pertained to life and God, they'd have to steal it. They could use their faith and receive. I have it now. They could just whistle. Be happy. Why? You got it. You have it. Your stomach could be telling you, no, you don't got it. Your bank account could be saying, bank account? What's that? <laughs> you know, it might have lint in there, a dollar or something. But you know what? You change that by this little member right underneath your nose. Your tongue, you know, a great big ship. He's looking the natural here. You, you, you see a great big ship, they all have rudders. They have a rudder that controls, the captain turns the ship from the control monitor. It goes back to the rudder and turns, and it, may, it don't just turn immediate like that. Well, that's the way your tongue is. Things don't just turn immediately. If they want to go to the left and they have to put their monitors to tell the ship to go to the left or go to the right, does it do it instantly? Everything is set up and turned. 
What if he would say, well, I guess it ain't working. Uh, uh, maybe we got something messed up. Uh, instead of saying turn to the right, let's go ahead and turn it to the left. Some reason I don't see anything changing. We'd laugh and say, no. So you have to be trained in the language of faith. Because you're going to be, if you don't watch it, you'll start looking like that, like that, uh, you know, uh, deckhand. And instead of the captain, and say, okay, we want to go to the right, boys. Turn everything to the right. Turn everything to the right. And then it looks like it's not working. Well, let's turn everything to the left again. No, that's double-minded. It's only one direction. See, faith only has one iota. And what it is, is present tense. Once you set that course, there's no going back. You can't go back. Oh, the enemy tried to get you to go back. There's no going. There's nothing to go back to but death and curse. Who wants death and curse? No. So what do you do? You just stay on course. You just stay on course. You just keep right on speaking. I have. I don't know what you need today, but uh, so you just simply would say, "I have whatever it is." You're not trying to tell people that. They don't, it's like speaking Spanish to someone that teaches, that talks English. They're like, what are you talking about? That sounds dumb. Well, when you speak faith to someone that talks doubt and unbelief, to them they're going to be like, what are you talking like? That sounds dumb to me. That sounds retarded. Well, they don't realize you're the one retarded and dumb. <laughs> you know, the blessing of God doesn't happen any other way. It's so simple People try everything. They try rubbing ropes. They try rubbing bees. They try putting dimes in the box. They try wearing beanie hats. They try and wear sh share, uh, 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 prayer shawls. They try rubbing ropes. They, they try doing all kind of stuff other than just say, well, what is it that you want? Well, I want to be saved. Well, just confess Jesus is Lord. Some of you on here today just say, Lord Jesus, I give my life to you. Bible says in Romans 10, 9, when you do that, you just got born again. So, well, I want to speak in tongues. I don't know how. You don't have to know how. All you have to do is say, Holy Spirit. I know I'm, I was born of the Spirit. Now I want to be filled with the Spirit. And now you just simply yield to whatever it is that's coming up out of you by faith. Show rombo kishan graka dele kutsan grike dele kutsha kri amar nasan grike dele kacha. It's all by faith. That's in Acts uh, chapter 19. Paul laid his hands on them. The Holy Spirit came on them and they began to speak in tongues. You're not going to, so it just sounds like gibberish. That's what the enemy wants you to think because he don't, he can't understand it, but it builds you up. Jude 1.20 says that. Build yourself up in the Holy Spirit of faith. That's what you do. And then you want to be healed. Yeah, I'd like to be healed. I've just been praying. I've been believing. I've been fasting. I've been shouting. I've been doing everything. Doing everything but receive your healing. <laughs> Amen. I've been praying about it for 10 years now, 20 years now, 30 years now. I know someday God going to heal me. I might die and go to heaven, but I know. Well, you don't have to. You can receive right now to say, thank you, Lord, that I have Isaiah 53, 5. By stripes, I'm healed. So keep checking with the word that you're healed. There's a lot of scriptures in there besides that one. And about healing. Just look up in the index of your Bible. Look up the word healed or healing. See, in, in Hebrews 11, I mean, Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus is the same. He didn't change. He said, according to your faith, according to your faith, according to your faith. The Bible is still according to your faith. It's impossible to please God. You'll be, di you'll be disconnected from God unless you speak present tense faith. All you got to do is one thing. Say what you have. What is it that you want turned into I have? That's all you got to do. Boy, that sounds simple, don't it? The, one, the enemy works overtime on that to get you to start talking a bunch of, uh, I almost said bull hockey, but I filled in the hockey. But, but that's, and that's and it's called religion. 
And people do it all the time. Deceive the masses by millions. Well, you don't have to be one of them deceived people. You can do what the Word of God says. Amen. So, confess Jesus as Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess you as my Lord. Fill with the Holy Spirit. Yield to Him. Acts 19, speak in the Spirit. Build yourself up. Jude one twenty. You can look up these references and uh, you'll see that. Believe me, it's in there. And uh, believe the Word of God and you'll be glad you did. You're healed by Isaiah 53, 5. By stripes, I'm healed. See? These are all statements of fact. These are not... Bible promises that God is promising that someday He's going to do this. No, this is a complete package. He's already done over 7,000 blessings in the Bible. They're statements of fact now. One time they was promises. I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to do it, but he, did, but he already fulfilled it in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Now, Lord, and coming again. Isn't that good? So we're going to leave that with you today. And uh, you're healed, saved, set free, and delivered. Don't let nobody else talk you out of it. Do what the Word of God says. See? Zero in on what is it that you've been praying about or asking God about. Take the next step and act on it. What's an act? An act of faith would say, I have that. And you would say what the that is. Amen? And then the whole scheme of the devil is just to get you to say you don't have it. Or to get you to say, yeah, someday it's going to happen. Or you're lying if you say you have it. Is the ship lying if they want to go to the right and they turn all the mechanisms to the right to go right and they see no immediate change? No, they just leave it there. Bigger the ship turns longer, but they're still going right. You maybe can't even see it or tell it at all. But all the compasses will give way eventually and say, yep, we are going south. See? So you just go with the Word of God. He can't lie. He cannot lie. And you're not lying when He said, put the compass, set the compass for south. I don't care if you're going north. That thing is going to turn around in your favor and you're going to start going to the south. Amen. So, Father, we thank you. We pray for these people on here and also in the studio audience today. We just speak the blessing over you. That you are the healed, saved, set free, and delivered in Jesus' name. And remember Matthew 15, 30, and 31, that most people didn't have body parts. So, Start thanking God, I have whatever it is in, in your body or in your body or on your body. Uh, start thinking, well, I believe God's going to give it to him if he wants to again. That's not faith. That's, that's hillbilly junk. <laughs> and so, well, what do you do? Well, you got to say what the Bible says. The Bible says what? Whatever you thank God for. We're going to go into that in a little bit more detail tonight at 6 o'clock if you want to tune in and come to church here if you're in the area. Um, we're going to go into detail about what is it that we're thanking God for. Whatever your immediate need is, turn that need into existing where you can wear it, drive it, eat it, where you could use it in your five senses in your life. So that's what you do. And how do you do it? Thank you, Lord, I have. I knew one guy and he got a hold of this and he went to jail and he went to prison and he'd just walk around in the prison and he said, thank you, Lord, I'm free. I'm free inside, I'm free outside. I'm free inside, I'm free outside. I mean, outside them prison walls. He started saying that and uh, one hour, then two hours, and hours turn into days, days turn in to weeks, weeks turn into months until the other prisoners would hear him saying that so much they'd say, shut up, and they'd throw stuff at him. He kept right on. He kept right on. After about, uh, I think it was two to three months, now he was a convicted, supposed to be a felony. And uh, after about, I think it was three months altogether, 
They came in and said, Mr. So-and-so, yeah, that's me. He said, you're free to go. And then they, they found out that they had some more evidence and he wasn't even the one that did any of that. And they, then they said, you know what? A matter of fact, what it, what it is, they changed the law books. Anyone that's convicted of that is not a felon, is not, and he had to work some things out, but still he got to go, he got to go home that day. Well, guess what all those other prisoners in there after he left? <laughs> Thank you, Lord, I'm free inside now. I give my life to Jesus. I speak in the spirit unknown mysteries even unto God. But what happened? One by one, they started getting out of there too, free. See, it's not, it's not just free on the outside, it's free on the inside. You get free on the inside of your life first, then the outside circumstances start changing. Amen? Keep your rudder straight ahead. You gotta start with the intent to never stop. That's where the power is at. Doesn't matter what the circumstances looks like, doesn't matter what a breakdown looks like, doesn't matter what the money situation looks like, I'm sticking with what God originally started me with. Amen? That's the way you do it. Thank you, Lord, for these people. Bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God.